Hey, welcome to Banos. Yesterday we checked out the town a little bit. We wandered around with our good friend Rob. This is a pretty interesting area geographically because we've dropped down from the Andes Mountains towards the Amazon. It becomes a huge canyon here at Banos and farther down. Gracias. It's nice, it's nice to you, sweet. And here we are at the Pailon del Diablo, which is a crazy looking waterfall. Best news we just heard, the dog can come too. Yeah. <laughs> There's gonna be this really sweet walkway with four different balcony levels underneath the waterfall. And then there's a cave. This is the bottom entrance to the waterfalls. There's another way. They both cost $2 each. But this is the only one where you get the view from the bottom. And it's supposed to be the more epic spot. Here we go on the wet part. We'll see what the dog thinks. <laughs> Just get through that quick, huh? Oh boy. Good job, Sombrita! We're so proud of our doggy! <laughs> What's it say? Nice to see a Washingtonian. Safe and wonderful travels to you, Klaus and Catherine. Wow, we saw that truck from New York parked here. Some of the, Catherine's from Washington. No way! Oh my gosh, I hope we meet these people, huh? Get that. What the? Where's the little buddy? Oh, Graham! Are you keeping the camera gear safe over there? Oh, he put his little head on there too. Oh. He was comfy while we were over there. You don't want to go under a waterfall, do you? That waterfall was probably one of the best. That was so much fun to wander around underneath and get soaked. It was really great. So let's go check out Banos. We got the van up here at this viewpoint. Check out this epic view. 
Ah, just kidding. The sombrita's making some friends. Graham's hiding under here. Hey, buddy. Oh, you're the best luck, friend. Come here, my boy. Emily, we can't fit any more animals. I don't know. This one's very small. <laughs> so is she. Oh, oh, she's playing really well with a little dog like that. Graham, you missed when she was little. <laughs> Graham, he's not running around or anything. Graham really holds his ground. Feeling on my sweater. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, Graham, good boy. Whoa. Whoa. You like the camera? Good morning. We're checking out the other area of Banos up on this hill. So we slept here last night. I figured we would get woken up by tour buses this morning, but it was really quiet. Going up this road, we're the last spot, but it's a really great road. We were surprised it was paved the whole way. Not too steep, good switchbacks. We're right next to Casa del Arbo, where the claim to fame is a huge swing that sends you over the edge of a cliff. So let's go check it out. Heading out of Banos after a really nice time and heading towards Cuenca. It's gonna be a nice, pretty big city where our friend Rob is gonna be as well. Oh, we found some rambutans! Yeah, and there are called rambutans here. Mamonchino in other countries, but rambutanes. This bag is a dollar. This bag is one dollar? This is the first time we've had since like, whew, bro, Central you can spin them open like this. Yeah. You got that? Mm. And I there's a pit in the side of that. Kind of like a lychee, but even better. I don't usually spin them open. There's usually like a little butt that you can put your fingernail into and then go like this. If you spin them open, sometimes you get a lot of juice all over you. That bag was probably cheaper than a bag of Doritos, but way tastier, right? <laughs> I've honestly been really enjoying the drive. It's been really beautiful. Not as curvy as I thought it would be, which has helped me be able to work while we're driving too. Oh, I'm so glad because I was, I really needed to work today, but we also really needed to move on. There's a lot we want to see in not a lot of time. For a while, it's probably going to be me trying to work while driving. And I hope I get acclimated like getting your sea legs or something like that. Because usually if I'm looking at my phone or reading or on the computer while we're driving, I get a little car sick. I've been taking little breaks where I stare off onto the mountains for a little bit. But honestly, Danny has been driving really, really well and I'm super thankful for that. So we're gonna stop and get him a nice meal over in this little restaurant on the side of the road we found. Ooh. 
What a drive, but we made it eventually here. Cuenca, Ecuador. It was awesome rolling up here to the spot on iOverlander. As I had mentioned to Rob that we were probably gonna go here and the guy's here. And then on the other side in front of the van, we didn't meet them the other day, but they left a note on the van. I hope to meet the fellow Washingtonian tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting here enjoying a beer. And actually Emily is finishing up the latest video for y'all. We've had a real nice morning here, met some new travelers, those ones who left the note. But yeah, we're gonna take a bike ride around the town here of Cuenca, Ecuador, which seems really clean, really nice place. It's gonna be sweet to explore a city by bikes. I guess that's Rob's preferred mode of transportation. He'll leave that huge rig and just get around on the bike. So this is our turn to try it out. Finally, we have ordered this engine fan. Back in Colombia, we got stopped on the roadside and actually had to get a tow because the engine was making a thumping noise. Woo, a big weight off my shoulders. It's supposed to arrive in Lima about a week before we get there, so we'll see how international Amazon shipping works. Oh, it's been such a nice couple of days. We met some more van lifers, Catherine and Klaus, and they are so much fun. They have big aspirations to travel the world in it. We have a couple of things that we want to do before we cross the border into Peru. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to get into Peru. It's a country that I've wanted to go for so long. And also my sister and my niece are going to meet us here. So we're stoked to have them come along. And meanwhile, I ordered all the car parts we should need. Transmission filter kit, which includes a gasket, a filter for the transmission oil, three oil filters, the engine oil filter housing that goes inside the engine, which is uh, kind of failure prone in this engine. And I ordered a bunch of gaskets too, just in case. I took the dog to go get her shots over here at a vet, just $10 for the rabies shot. Pretty much it to head to the border, right? Yeah, we got laundry done, got the pet paperwork done. I think I will go through our paperwork heading to the skate park or? Yeah, time to blow off some steam at the skate park. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you knew, maybe you didn't know. Panama hats are actually from Ecuador. And here we are in the main city that creates them. This is a little museum here where they're gonna show us how Panama hats are made, as well as have the opportunity to buy some, but they run from about 80 up to over $1,000. So maybe we'll just uh, learn today. Although my head is very bare. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we learned a ton about Panama hats. They're actually created from this plant that grows in the jungle. And then they use scissors and strip it to the fibers. We were able to actually see the process from there on. The hats usually come to this factory, sort of pre-woven most of it, except for the edge. And they, they do the edge, they have to steam the hat, they have to put it in a really hot water, bath with the dye if it's going to be a dyed hat 
and then there's another steam press to shape it and mold the fibers to be supple and after all that there's the last step of embellishing with decorations so we didn't end up buying one but the most expensive one we saw was 450 bucks very cool stuff Pongo Museum is free and within walking distance of our spot here in Cuenca. The reason this museum really stands out is showcasing of a ritual that was performed in the Amazon, shrinking human heads. Oh my. Emily, I found it. Let's go. In the male initiation ritual, the tribe Uyund would Head, make shrunken heads of sloths, but before this was only the first step and then they would do a human shrunken head. Now they only do the sloth heads. But these are real human heads that are shrunken in here. So if someone was to kill some another person and it was unjust, they would have to go to a waterfall and ask the spirits what to do. And if it was deemed it was unjust death, their head would have to be shrunken to go into limbo to find their victim. And then the... So they would kill the murderer. They would kill the murderer. And if, if somebody killed somebody, they yeah. would shrink his head. Eye for an eye, I suppose. But the power of the person, the murderer, would be given to the victim. Justice for the victim and punishment to avoid murders, it says. They also shrunk the heads of the enemies whenever they would raid their other uh, towns. It would only be men, it wouldn't be the heads of women, children, or mestizos. So it would only be indigenous men that would get their heads shrunken. That was a really awesome museum. I mean, free is for me if you know what I mean. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna check out the outside part of the museum, which is actually a big, huge ruin. So, pretty cool. Thanks so much for wandering around with us. We'll see you guys next time at the Peruvian border. If you like this video, let us know in the comments. And if you'd like to join the family, head over to Patreon.